Cool. Now that we know that the valve timing is exactly on, let's move on to doing some uh, valve lash adjustments and looking at the camshaft lobes. So I actually thought that we were going to need to measure the camshaft lobes, but I, I can kind of visually see that we really don't need to. And the way that I can tell is by looking at the white patterns on the camshaft. This camshaft, I didn't actually buy it new, but I am pretty sure it's not original either. I can visually see that the wipe patterns um, are really pretty stable on all of the camshaft lobes. There is no one lobe that um, seems to be excessively worn in. So I don't think a precise measurement like this is going to be necessary. And in fact, the manual also says that the, a visual inspection of the camshaft lobe should be more than um, enough because I think it is very easy to tell if your camshaft uh, needs replacing just by visually inspecting it. But if you have any doubts, do purchase a digital caliper like this. Uh, this is kind of a cheapy unit that I bought from Amazon, um, but it works perfectly fine for something like this. And do go ahead and measure all of the camshaft lobes at their most thickest point, so top to bottom. And to make sure of two things, one, you're getting consistent readings across all of the intake valves and all of the exhaust valves, and two, they're within spec. Even if they're evenly worn in, if the camshaft is too worn in, that pretty much means that the valves aren't opening all the way as it should, uh, which can rob you of power. But clearly that's not going on with this camshaft, so I'm just gonna skip that and get back to just lashing valves. Uh, so in order for us to do that, I made this uh, handy dandy chart here. And what this tells, uh, what this really signifies is these are the six cylinders, one, two, three, four, five, six, in this order. And you have exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, so on and so forth. And this signifies each of the camshaft lobes and the valves that it presses down. And it's important to note which valve it is. It's uh, either exhaust or intake because the intake valves and the exhaust valves, they have different clearances uh, or different valve lash adjustments that we need to do. So for the intake, uh, it is eight thousandths of an inch or 0.2 millimeters. And for the exhaust, it is one hundredth of an inch or 0.24 millimeters. And these are cold numbers. And it is certainly cold in here because it is uh, 30 degrees in here. So we're going with the cold numbers. If you're wondering what the hot numbers are, uh, it is, I'm just looking at my notes here. It is uh, one hundredth of an inch for intake and 0 0.012 inch for the exhaust. So slightly bigger if you're doing it hot. And when I say hot, it's doing the valve lash adjustments when the engine is at operating temperature. And some people actually insist that you need to do the valve lash adjustments when the engine is at operating temperature. And on the surface, that actually does make sense because the, the valve lash isn't actually a, all that important at cold, it's when the engine is running uh, at the operating temperature, that's uh, the valve lash that we're actually trying to adjust for. In practice though, it's very hard to do uh, well because especially when it's cold like this, when I get the engine to operating temperature and I get around to removing the valve cover and doing a few different valves, um, the engine's already gonna cool down. So I actually suggest you do the valve latch adjustments when um, at hot. If you know that the valve lashes are pretty well adjusted already and you're just looking for a few different problem points where you need to do further tuning. In our case, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that we need to touch nearly all of them. So we are going to adjust the valve lash hot, and but we'll, what we'll do is after we're done with adjusting all of them, we'll turn the engine on, uh, get it to operating temperature, and then measure the clearances uh, and make sure that it is roughly uh, to the hot lash adjustment numbers. 
Um, and I think that's probably the easier way to go. And if we need to make any more adjustments after that, we'll just try to do it real quick uh, while the engine is still warm. The way to check the, the valve lash is you need to look for the, the camshaft lobe that is pointing straight up. This is the position in which you need to measure the valve clearance or the valve lash because this means that the valve is completely closed. Um, it's the rocker arm is as far as it'll go up and that's the position that we need to measure. Uh, you cannot measure the clearance when the lobe is pointing down because of course the lobe is already pressing down on the rocker arm and there is no clearance to measure. So to adjust a valve lash, you need pretty much three things. Uh, a feeler gauge. So the four blades that you're gonna use on your feeler gauge is the 0 0.008 inch for the intake number and a 0 0.009 and this is just to make sure that the slightly or the one step up thicker blade doesn't fit into the clearance. Same thing with the exhaust. I have the 0 0.01 inch for the exhaust and then I have 0 0.011 just to make sure that this one doesn't slide through the exhaust valve clearance. Two wrenches, one is 14 millimeter for the adjustment nut that is above and the 17 millimeter wrench for the lock nut, which is the one below. So this one seems to be already pointing straight up because we have the engine at top dead center. So let's try to slide in the 0 0.01 and see if that goes through and that goes through pretty easily and then looking at 0 0.011 this one also slides through so that means that this um, this rocker arm needs to be adjusted to be slightly tighter now the way to do this is first take your 17 millimeter wrench and then take the, the bottom nut and then twist it counterclockwise to loosen it. This allows you to move the adjustment nut that's right above it. It's a slightly smaller nut. And this is the nut that you really use to move or to adjust the clearance. So what I like to do is actually slide the one that is supposed to be adjusted to. And this is slightly counterintuitive, but you move it counterclockwise to tighten the clearance. So I moved it slightly counterclockwise. Now this won't actually pull out. So I'm gonna twist this until this one So at this point right here, the 10 slides in, but there's a lot of friction. And if the 11 doesn't slide in, you, we know that's the spot. So 11 doesn't slide in, but 10 still does. So we're going to hold the 14 millimeter still, very, very still. And we're gonna take the 17. and tighten it. We'll check it one more time. 10 slides through and 11 does not. So that's how you adjust the, the clearance. And it's the same procedure for the intake as well. And make sure that I, there's definitely no torque rating for this, but just make sure that it's tight so that the vibration of the engine doesn't knock it loose again. Triple checking, 10 slides in, 11 does not. So the one right next to it, this is an intake. So this one uses the, um, 0 0.008 or 8 thousandths of an inch. Let's see if that, if this one needs adjustment. Eight slides in and nine 
does not. So this one actually doesn't need any more adjustment. It's already good as is. So what I'm going to do is just hold um, the adjustment nut still and give the, um, the locking nut a good tightening. So we adjusted these two valves. So we're going to cross these off. I put the camera right next to the, um, the head. So hopefully you guys can actually better get a better view this time. I'm going to turn the camshaft clockwise to get two more valves. And I don't actually think it's that important. Um, what order you lash the valves in as long as you get to all of them. So now this one is pointing straight up and so is this one. So we'll go ahead and the, do these two. So this one is in, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, intake, exhaust. Shoot. And this one slides in almost too easily. And this one is and the point one one also slides in, so this one also needs to be adjusted. So again, we're gonna loosen the lock, the bottom bigger lock nut, and turn it counterclockwise to loosen. And we're gonna take the top adjuster nut. and turn it counterclockwise to tighten. And we're gonna turn it until the 10 hundredths inch blade feels really tight. Maybe it's a little too tight. Turn it clockwise to loosen. So it slides around with a bit of friction and 11 does not go in. So that's, uh, that's the position. And twist and do one more check before you tighten it completely down. 10 goes in and 11 does not. Yeah, and this is why I, I don't want to do this hot because I, I don't think I can do this fast enough and nearly all the valves need adjusting. So we'll do it at cold and just verify at hot. So now that we just did four, we're gonna go through the rest of the eight and uh, check and adjust all of those. After that, we're going to screw back on the valve cover, turn the engine on, get the engine hot and then remove it and then come back and check the clearances when the engine is hot and hopefully that'll be pretty dead on. All right, now that we have everything adjusted, we're gonna reassemble everything back so that we can turn on the car again. We'll get it up to operating temperature, and then we'll quickly remove the valve cover and check the valve lash at, uh, at the operating temperature. We are going to replace the valve cover gasket with a new one because a lot of people uh, do recommend against reusing any gaskets and that includes a valve cover. But right now all we're trying to do is get it up to operating temperature and there's no need to waste a uh, gasket for that. So we will just reinstall the old one The valve cover bolts really don't have to be on that tight. In fact, they recommend um, seven foot pounds of torque for these uh, valve cover bolts. And over tightening them will actually make the gasket leak. And last thing, there is no particular sequence for the valve cover bolts. So you can just go ahead and tighten whichever ones you feel like. Make sure you reinstall the spark plugs exactly back to uh, where the spark plug came from.
All right, now that the valves are theoretically all dialed in, let's start the car, warm it up, and check the valve lash when the engine is at operating temperature. For the engine to warm up, I jot this down. Uh, intake at hot should be one hundredths inch. So I have the hundredths and eleven hundredths blade ready. And exhaust is hot at 0 0.012 inches. So I have 0 0.012 and 0 0.013 blades ready to go. You basically want to wait until the temp gauge is right in the middle. We're still not there, so we'll wait a little bit longer. All right, now the car's all warmed up, so we're gonna turn it off. And we're gonna try to move through the steps as quickly as possible. And we'll start measuring the lash on whichever valve uh, the camshaft is pointing up. So we have exhaust intake intake. Intake is 10. All right, cool. I think uh, we're all done here. Let's put the, the valve cover back on and uh, call it a day.